Good evening. Welcome to our midweek Lenten service. We're very glad you're here and joining us this evening. We'll be singing, uh, well, Patricia and Judy and Gary will be playing uh, Joyous Light this, this season. And it's a beautiful piece of music and we hope you, you enjoy that. And then in the middle, we'll be talking about strange stories found in the Bible. So we invite you into worship tonight and we hope that you have enjoy it. And we hope that you're having, um, enjoying these beautiful days of snow-covered mountains and sunshine. May God be with you.
thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you have enlightened us by revealing the light that never fades. Night has fallen, and day's allotted span draws to a close. The daylight you created for our pleasure has fully satisfied us, and yet, of your free gift, now the evening lights do not fail us. We praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom be glory, honor, and power to you in the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good evening, or good afternoon. Today is March 17th. It is St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Today we are, our Lenten series has been focusing on parts of the Bible that we do not hear in the lectionary. And so today we are going to focus on the book of Daniel. Daniel is not heard in the lectionary. However, as children, if you're in Sunday school, you had the opportunity to hear uh, some of the more famous stories. The two most famous stories are the fiery furnace, where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego get thrown into a fiery furnace. And the second story is Daniel and the lion's den. 
However, if you never attended Sunday school, these are stories that would be lost. So basically, Daniel is a very complicated book. And actually, as I started to study it, I was very sorry I picked it because it's so complicated. So Miss Pam has done a wonderful job with the Godly Play version of uh, the book of Daniel. And we're going to just link that to um, in the bulletin underneath this video. Uh, so basically, Daniel boils down to uh, the two famous stories, The Fiery Furnace and uh, Daniel in the Lion's Den. And then it also has a very famous saying that we're used to hearing, but we're not sure where it comes from, which is the, the writing is on the wall. And that particular uh, saying comes from the book of Daniel. So basically, Daniel comes from the first commandment, that you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make your, for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. That is the basis for the story, for the entire book of Daniel. A little bit of background also with the book of Daniel. Daniel follows the book Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is a book of a prophet who has a lot of visions and dreams. However, Ezekiel would fall more under the prophet's side of things. And Daniel also ha is a huge long book about visions and dreams, but it is really more an apocalyptic uh, book. Its sister book would be the book of Revelation in the New Testament. There is one tie-in that's really important to note. When Jesus calls himself Son of Man, that is a tie-in directly to the book of Daniel. Daniel uses that term. So that's our Jesus jump in the story of Daniel. Daniel's two basic stories really have the same theme. The first is found in Daniel chapter 3, which is the fiery furnace. I think the, uh, the best version of this story is Veggie Tales, if you've ever seen that. Um, Daniel has three friends. They ha their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and, Abednego, and Abednego. And they are under the ruler of King Ned Nedabuk Ned and King Nebuchadnezzar builds this great statue and he decided that every time anyone hears any sound of the horn pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, they shall fall down and worship this golden image. And the three friends of Daniel uh, choose not to do that because they understand that they need to bow down only to God following the commandment. And King Nebuchadnezzar had an ego and so he throws them into the fiery furnace. And as and they, he heats up the furnace uh, hotter than it should be and instead of them coming out in with harm they look in and they see a fourth person with the three friends. And they come out untouched, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. And the outcome of that was, therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the God of Gad, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other God who is able to rescue in this way. And so the point of that is that by them sticking to the commandments and worshiping God, they are able to bring God into this region. Now, the book of Daniel is about being in a time of exile. And they are in Babylonia, and they are trying to crawl back to what they used to know, similar to our time now. 
Now our second story comes from chapter 6 in the book of Daniel, which is our famous Daniel on the lion's den. This time Daniel is under King Darius and King Darius uh, decided with some advisement to have everybody worship him for 30 days and Daniel refused to do so, which led him into the, the lion's den. And so once again, the same story comes to us. At break of day, the king arose and went, went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have, not, they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. Then King Darius wrote to all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied to you i make a decree that in my royal dominion people are to tremble and fear before the god of daniel for he is the living god enduring forever his kingdom shall never be destroyed and his dominion shall be to the end he delivers and rescues he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth he who has saved daniel from the power of the lions so again, by them holding fast to their faith, they were witnesses to God. Um, in a nutshell, the book of Daniel is about really two things. It's about following the commandments of worshiping one God and understanding not that we shouldn't be worshiping idols, that God is above our idols. And the other part of the book is about hope. It's about hope in God being there with you in the trials and tribulations of life. Now we know through Jesus Christ that we don't get out of suffering, that Jesus suffered on the cross. But we stand in the hope of the resurrection and the hope in the book of Daniel points that way, that God is with us, that God is always with us. I'm kind of in this in-between place. Like here is what most of the garden looks like. It's dead and it's, it's dormant. And then behind me is this beautiful tree sprung into yellow and green and, and it's growing and it's really the first signs of spring. And when you're talking about hope, I think that's a great way to, a great scene for it. To talk about that the hope of spring, it comes every year regardless of the long winter. Sometimes our winters are longer than others, sometimes they're shorter, but there's always a spring that follows. And that's kind of in a nutshell what the book of Daniel is about. It's about hope. Not any old hope, but the hope of God. And so when you flip the book from Daniel to Revelation, it's about the hope in Jesus Christ coming to gather you home. And, uh, but to remember that it comes about from knowing who our God is and to know and to recognize where our idols lie and to try and switch those around so that God is first and the idols fall into second, third, fourth, fifth place. And to remember that we have hope and the long winter will be over, and it will be spring in not too long of a time. And things will change, and they'll be beautiful. And we will have changed and grown. And that really is what the book of Daniel is about. There's 12 chapters of this, and it's about dreams and visions. And right now we're dreaming and visioning what spring will be like. And in the meantime, we learned in the book of Daniel that there are trials and tribulations, but that God is with us through them all. 
May you have a wonderful evening. Amen.
in a day that is past. Bring your healing to the wounds of this day, those we have inflicted, those we have felt, those that trouble our world. Cover us this night with the wings of your grace and raise us to a new day in Christ our light and our peace. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Chum, Chumley, you come here. I know you don't want to. Will you say a line? You said I didn't have to say anything. Does he say a line? So you can say, uh, say, Daniel, are you alive? Okay. Okay. Ready? Daniel, are you alive? Yes, God has saved me. Is that it?